Okay, so I'm going to explain extended triple Diffie-Hellman. So as we'll see, this is the method that's used when we want to create a complete end-to-end -end, uh, encryption. Okay, so let's let's explain the problem that we uh, that, that that we have. Okay, so let's say we have uh, Alice here. And we have Bob. So what we really want to do is to be able to allow Bob and Alice to communicate with a unique key. And each time they connect, there will be a unique key used. So the traditional way that, that we have done this in the past is that we create a public and a private key for Bob and Alice. Uh, Bob sends over his public key to Alice. Alice creates a new session key that she would like to use. She encrypts it with Bob's public key and passes it back to Bob, who can then decrypt it. The problem with that is that what happens when someone gets uh, Bob's private key, they can then determine all of the, uh, all of the keys that were used in the pass. Also, we might be using PKI so that whoever owns uh, Bob's uh, private key could listen to the communication between Bob uh, and Alice. So generally, we'd be moving towards what is called elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. So with elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, what we do is that Alice generates a secret uh, value typically 256-bit secret value, and Bob does the same. He creates a B. This will be an A and a B purely for the session that Bob and Alice are going to get involved with. With elliptic curve, what we do is we pick a point on the elliptic curve called the base point, and then for our public key, we add G a number of times to find our end value which can then be our public key and with public key encryption it's not possible to be able to find the value of n uh, uh, given this point here on the elliptic curve we also use a prime number p and we make sure that all our operations are done mod p so the first thing that Alice does is that she will generate her public key, which is A times G. It's G added A times. And then Bob does the same thing. He creates B and G. So it's not possible, even though Eve is listening to the communications, to be able to determine what the secret value A is and the secret value of B. Now Alice sends over A G and Bob sends over B G. Then Alice takes this value, takes her private value and multiplies them to get A B G. We also have a mod P in there uh, for this, but I'm not actually adding it in just, just now. Over here, uh, Bob takes the AG mod P and then multiplies it with his value to get uh, the same value. So the key becomes ABG and it's shared. So now Alice and Bob can communicate typically with AES encryption using this key. Every time they reconnect, they will use a different key to be able to uh, communicate. Now the way that uh, the problem that we have here is that uh, if Alice wants to communicate with Bob, then Bob must be online to be able to send his public key or the key for that session. So what we need is a method that allows us to be able to use an offline version of Bob's key. 
And this is where the X3DH uh, protocol comes in. So it's used by Signal, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and so on and allows for secret communications between uh, Alice and Bob. So first Alice creates her secret private key as we've seen before and then multiplies it by G and that becomes her public identity. Now Bob does the same thing he has B, multiplies it by G, and then he has his own identity. These are then stored on a trusted server and provide the long-term identity of Alice and Bob. Now what happens is that uh, Bob will publish a number of uh, predefined public keys. These are signed with uh, Bob's private key to make sure that Alice can prove the keys that he's going to create. So just like we had here and also here, we're going to create a number of random numbers for these private keys that uh, Bob wants to use. And then what we'll do is we'll then uh, Alice can then use them. So let's say that Bob publishes this as a pre-shared uh, key. So this is the random number that he creates and multiplies it by G and he'll create multiple versions of these. Now, now what Alice will then do is to be able to select one of these pre-shared keys which have been signed uh, for the uh, exchange for the generation of the key that Bob and Alice are going to use. So in the first part uh, we take uh, A G which is uh, Alice's uh, public identity, long-term identity and then we do key exchange with our pre-shared key. We'll call this a uh, pre-shared public key of Bob. And then they exchange that and they'll both end up with a B bar B dash G A B dash G. So with this, uh, the first Diffie-Hellman exchange, Alice will be able to compute these two values and this becomes the first part of the Diffie-Hellman exchange. Later on, Bob will be able to compute that part. In the second part, uh, Alice will generate a new private key that she wants to use for the connection. Again she multiplies it by G to give her public key part and now we'll call this EK for Alice. This is our public key of the key that she wants to use for the first session between Bob and Alice. So now what we'll do is that we'll now use Bob's long-term identity and mix that in. So that becomes A, B, A dash B, G, A dash B, G. So this now gives us the second part of our, uh, of our calculation. And then in the last part, what we'll do is that we'll use uh, the new key on either side, pass that, and we get a dash b dash g, a dash b dash g. Our key is then uh, the concatenation of the first part, the second part and the third part. This generates uh, the key 
that we are actually going to use when Bob eventually receives uh, the message. So our key then becomes the Diffie-Hellman part one, concatenated with the Diffie-Hellman part two, and the Diffie-Hellman part three. And we put that through a, a key derivation function. So we take each of these elements, put it through a key derivation function, and we output the key that we're going to use for the first communication between Bob and Alice. Then, on the other side, for Bob to be able to generate the same key, we will go through, Bob will go through this part here. So here, uh, we will see that, uh, sorry, the, the parameters which are passed uh, to uh, Bob will be the pre-shared key that she has selected for Bob because Bob needs to know which one to use here. She will send through our public key identity and which is a G as we remember and she will also send through uh, the public key of the key that she has created for the initial session. So that's a key D, and it's a dashed G. So as we see, she sends through an encrypted message. So she'll take a message and then encrypt it with this key here that she's just derived. At the same time, she sends through the public key that she has selected uh, from Bob's list of pre-shared uh, uh, public keys that he would like to use, so that Bob can pick that. She sends through her identity, her long-term identity. And then she sends through the public key of the key that she is using to generate this key. Okay, so those are the three things. So when Bob opens up the request or the message, he will read these three things here. And then what happens is that these parameters are then used on the other side for Bob to be able to create the same key as Alice. So B dash G is uh, this key here. You generate that part now. For the second part, uh, B G, he knows that, receives uh, this value here, and which is that value there. So he can produce the second part of the Diffie-Hellman method. And then finally, he knows what that is. There. He receives this, which is that part, and he'll be able to do the third part. So then Bob will be able to go through the same steps as Alice to be able to generate the same shared key uh, between uh, the, the the, the two of them. What we then do with the signal protocol is that we then ratchet. So each time, if we start off with this key, we will then ratchet uh, the message that we're sending to create another key, and then so on. And it's not possible for someone to be able to reverse back even for the keys that we're at actually using. But the, at the core of the initial uh, key that's used between Bob and Alice, uh, we use uh, this, this method. Okay, so if I recap what we did with the elliptic curve, we take a secret value A and B, 
we then create a public key value which is ag mod p all the time i've left out the mod p's and, and here if you're interested we typically use curve 25519 and the prime number we use is 2 uh, to the power of 255 minus 19. Uh, if you're also interested the x coordinate of the g value uh, is 9. <laughs> uh, so we go through that, we generate, uh, this is a, a point on the curve, we pass that to Bob, uh, Bob does the same thing, takes the scalar value, this this 256 bit random value, calculates the public key, and we end up with the same key. As I explained, the problem here is that Bob and Alice are not on might be offline, so we need to create an offline method, and that's where uh, this comes in. We create the three equivalent Diffie-Hellman exchanges to calculate the eventual key, and then on the other side, uh, the Bob will create the same calculations, and they'll end up with the same uh, key. A core part of this is that uh, these keys, uh, Alice will also have uh, pre-shared public keys that she creates a whole lot of them Bob will also have that too and then each of these are actually signed with the private key of the person so if we look at it there's the the core method that, that we use as I said before we exchange that's what we use with elliptic curve to Hellman we then extend that with uh, x3dh and we have a pre-shared key that are signed we then pass that we go through the three phases and we end up hopefully with the same key on either side